their, their eyes. Mm. Now, like, look, is this yeah. is this the most fact-based analysis you're ever going to hear? Maybe not. However, like, it's obviously a sincere held belief. Yeah. And, like, yes. you know, she's really seemingly struggling with losing her family. I don't know. Is that a exploitation? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it's a lot of the other stuff he has, just like drunk people saying crazy things about their lives and blah, blah, blah. Yes. The reason I bring him up is because as soon as this documentary came out and he had this sort of mainstream crossover success, he's celebrating this, you know, case. And within a couple of days, the Me Too allegations start popping out. Oh, boy. A lot of women come out. I, he forced me to do things I didn't want to do. Blah, 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 blah. You, mm. you know, it's Was it 40 years ago? No, he's it's, only 25 years old. Oh, so. okay. So it wasn't 40. Yeah, it would be difficult for him to go back that far. Yeah. And so and initially, he doesn't really say anything. The other day, he comes out with an apology video. Now, I, I watched this apology video. So is he admitting to the well, this is what we're gonna get into here. or whatever? This is what we're going to get into here. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. So this is the apology video, and I thought this was uh -huh. a, an interesting way for people to learn about the, an effective woke apology. Because he hits all the notes. This guy checks every box in this particular video. So Good. let's start it out with step number one. All right. Um, I never thought I'd make a video like this, but... Um, I think there's an important conversation to be had, and I just want to be fully accountable, honest, and uh, transparent with all of you guys. Okay, so step one okay. Pat, is you got to hit the buzzwords. Okay, like yeah. accountable, accountable, likes transpar like transparency. transparency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to say, remember the words that test well. Transparency tests well. And I bet the University of Pittsburgh is really happy he's wearing uh, their <laughs> paraphernalia <laughs> as he's making these apologies. I bet they love that. I didn't notice that. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to make sure that whenever there's a, a terrible crime, you got your logo to wear yep. on whoever that yeah. is. You got your pitch sweatshirt on so that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Here's number two and the best way to make a woke apology. So I'd like to start by thanking every single that came out uh, in the past oh, week. Thank you. Um, Interesting. To speak about different ways in which my behavior has pressure during a sexual situation uh -oh. and to people who said that I've made unwanted advances and I had a hard time with rejection. Um, I'm sure this was not easy to do. It's never easy to speak out and it was uh, hard for me to hear as well because I didn't even really realize that I had this pattern that had affected multiple people. So the compliment the bravery yeah. of the people accusing, accusing you of you. sexual assault. Right. It's always important to know that they're incredibly brave, and you should give them a lot of credit for accusing you of this terrible thing that mm -hmm. you're not exactly admitting you did. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't even know he did it. He didn't even know he did it. He didn't know. Right, but it's brave for people to tell him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so that's step number two. Compliment the bravery of the people accusing you of sexual assault. And thank them. He actually thanked them, them for thank coming them. out against him. <laughs> Yeah, sexual assault. I that had, was really cool. I had no idea. No idea. But thank you for letting me know. Uh -huh. All right, here's uh, step three. I'd also like to apologize for my silence. Um, I think that when this stuff first came out, I was in a state of denial and shock. Mm -hmm. um, I was, you know, just riding the high from my movie. Eight hours, I was denounced by my closest collaborators, and uh, my name was printed in, in, in 40 different news outlets uh, next to the words sexual misconduct. Oh. I just kind of spiraled into a mental health crisis. Oh, no. Uh, I'm okay now, but I don't really think this is about me. Mm. No, it's not about you. It's not about well, you, except that you're a criminal. Well, it is, it about is kind that. of about you. The kind of accusations about you. are against you, so <laughs> yes. it is about you in that way. But this is step number three, Pat. Cultivate right. sympathy. Oh. You see, he, just had, he was coming off the high of his big movie and everything was going right. He into a mental health crisis. crisis. It was a crisis it's a of crisis. mental health. That and which, this it, has only happened over a couple of weeks, so it, it's a very short-lived crisis in this particular case. But it would be a crisis nonetheless. Yeah, well, when, you're, when you find out that you're a sexual predator. You're being hit with that bulletin one day. You're just like, I hey, know. by the way, did you know you're a sexual predator? I didn't. That's that's but that's sad. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for telling. Me. Okay. So you've right. used the word transparency. Mm -hmm. You have complimented and thanked the women for. Yes, I have. And now okay. you've cultivated sympathy. Mm -hmm. What do you do next? Here's step four. 
I really want to do better and be fully accountable for everything that I've done. Mm -hmm. So that being said, things clear. All right. um, I've always taken no for an answer. Um, mm. As far as consent, I've never uh, overstepped that line. Mm. Um, but, you know, I think I want to have a more nuanced and important conversation about power dynamics. Mm. Oh, boy, yeah, and, uh, power dynamics. Coercion. And coercion. Coercion. Dynamics. Right. That's, those are important elements. Now, this is an interesting, it's a nuanced step here, uh, step four in this process, which is okay. you rule out the worst, but also show understanding. Uh -huh. Okay, so he is saying here, he never had a situation where a woman said no. With them. He never had a situation where they said no, and he did it anyway. Okay. okay? Yeah. He wants you to well, know the war, your war, the, where your mind is going. Uh -huh. He didn't do it. He didn't do that. Okay. But he wants to have an important conversation about power structures and coercion. <laughs> and I'm fascinated by this whole thing because, you know, there's this idea, you know, Pat, basically what he's saying here is, I was a famous YouTuber. How could they say no? They could say they could not have sex with me. Well, the power structure is too uneven. The power structure yeah. is too uneven. They're <laughs> incapable of this. <laughs> they, a woman can't say no to a YouTuber. You no. know how many followers I have? How could a woman ever say no to me? I have lots and lots of people who watch me. Okay. Yeah. This is right. a weird thing to say, and and progressives do this all the time. It reminds me of the progressive argument on voter ID, where they say, you know, look, we have to protect black people. They can't get driver's licenses. How could we possibly say, how could a black person ever get a driver's license? <laughs> and it's like, that is incredibly racist. and racist. Right? The same thing here. Look. The argument essentially being made by this power structure thing that they keep bringing up is if someone is, if a man is famous, a woman can't say no. We have to protect the woman. She can't make a decision for herself. She can't just tell the guy, hey, back Stop. off. Stop. Right. Right. Now, if she says, say, you've just committed a crime. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, so we have mm -hmm. plenty of systems set up to deal with that type of behavior. And what I saw from the accuser's uh, statements seemed to be consistent with them. None of them said they said no. They were just like, well, I was uncomfortable. And, uh, you know, he was he was persistent. And I, you know, so I didn't, uh, you know, and so, and then the power structure, it's like, look. My gosh. You know, look, it's difficult. So none right? of them do claim to have said that. Some of them say that. <laughs> but some of them do. Oh, Let's just deal with those there? people. Do we know? know? I know there's several. I don't know what the total number is. As, okay. as these things tend to go, you, you get the first accuser, and then all of a sudden you get a bunch of other accusers, and you, you don't know where the line is from people who are making statements that are real about a real event or aren't. And it, it sort of spirals out of control eventually. Here. Yeah. But it's important to understand that you got to say, like, all right, like, I'm not a rapist. I'll rule out the worst accusations here, but mm -hmm. I, I want to understand how they feel. All right, let's go on to step five. I think for, for a long time, I was behaving in a way that I actually thought was normal. Um, I thought that, you know, going home from the bar alone made you a loser. Um, I thought that persistence was a form of flattery. And I thought that, you know, if at first somebody was reluctant, you know, they're playing hard to get, just try harder. And if you think someone's feeling you, you know, make a physical advance and uh, see if they go with it. Mm. So this is step five here, Pat. Ah. Make your transparency mm -hmm as vague as possible. Mm -hmm. Now you're being transparent, but you need to be vague about that transparency. You right. can't actually say what happened. You kind of just give these like random scenarios. And like, you know, the, I love that. I don't know, I was being persistent. Well, what does that mean? Like go back to Jimmy Stewart in uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Mm -hmm. He's walking out, he's in his football uniform. He's walking with <laughs> a girl, right? Yeah. That's persistent, yes. right? Yeah. I, I guess you could also describe Jeffrey Dahmer as persistent. Where in that spectrum are you? Like, which one right. of those? I mean, Jeffrey Dahmer was really persistent. That sort of persistence is a real problem. The Jimmy Stewart kind, maybe not quite as bad. Mm -hmm. So where are that, we don't know. Um, we are on step five of, of the perfect woke apology. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with the other three steps here in just a moment. So uh, David Newhauser, he's the chief investment officer for uh, Livermore Partners. He said this week, you start and think, where is the safest place for your investment in terms of assets? 
the only place really to go as an alternative now is gold in terms of knowing that you're not going to see the debasement of your assets. I, honestly, can you trust land, even farmland? I mean, is that going to go up? Is it going to lose value? Your house, I, because everything is so unstable right now, you have to look for something that thrives when instability is around. This week, Goldline has two specials at goldline.com. First, Goldline is offering 6% in free promotional medals with every qualified selected IRA acquisition uh, that you would complete this month. So if you do it, complete it this month, you get 6% of additional assets in to your uh, self-directed IRA. Uh, did you know you can put gold in a retirement account, like a traditional IRA or an old 401k, Roth, uh, all of this. Second, with the purchase of every gold legal tender bar, you will also receive at no additional cost 25 silver for free. That's 866 Gold Line. That's where you call and talk to somebody right now. They're waiting for your call. Just ask them for 866 Gold Line or goldline.com. 10 seconds station ID. 1960 and FM 101.1. Okay, we're doing the eight steps on the perfect woke apology. Step one, remember the word transparency tests well. Bravery of the people accusing you of sexual assault. So brave. Step three, so brave. cultivate sympathy. Mm -hmm. Step four, are they brave if you're not guilty of anything? No, <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> Step four, uh, rule out the worst, but show understanding. Okay. Step five, mm -hmm. make your transparency as vague as possible. All right, we're up to step six, and here's Andrew Callahan, the YouTuber, demonstrating it for us. I think that, especially I realized when so many uh, young people, especially young men, rushed to defend me uh, when this stuff first started coming out, right. that this type of sex pest behavior is normalized. And a lot of people think this sex stuff pest. is normal when mm -hmm. I don't think that it is. I think that I want to be fully oh. responsible for not having a fluid understanding of <laughs> consent. Okay, and what man, he hits all the buzzwords. Looks looks like. Like. A fluid understanding of <laughs> consent. What a great freaking phrase that is. Oh, God. This so, is crazy. Uh, this is, I, I think this is most the most despicable step in here. This is step six, redirect anger to your own supporters. Right. Right, like what he does here is he says, I, my entire career was built on young males watching YouTube. And those people, when they heard these accusations, came out and defended me. Now, is that justified? Maybe not. But like to vilify your own supporters, to, to redirect the anger from everyone else, real problem are the people who watch my YouTube videos and they were out there defending me and that's a real that's the real problem is it in America please look at them over there all the people that built my career and made me all this money they're the problem not me I hate that part of this yeah that is it's like yeah. again maybe they're misled maybe they shouldn't be uh, defending you but like they're trying to be on your side when they think you've been wrongly accused and now you're vilifying them and your apology ah oh, incredible I hate that all right step seven that being said, a lot of the things that have been said online about me mm -hmm. uh, are not true. A lot of things are missing really important contextual information that I think would change people's interpretation mm -hmm. of a lot of these situations, but I'm not here to invalidate anybody's lived experience. Uh, uh, if you feel pressure, lived you know, experience. that's just what it is. So this is step seven. Uh, Keep your denials vague and use the term lived, lived experience. experience because that you got to do that in any woke apology. Like, First of all, he, you know, he's like, uh, a lot of the stuff's being said about me isn't true. Well, he doesn't say what that is. So mm -hmm. you just assume whatever you want. But secondarily, like, I'm sorry. If, if you did these things, then you've committed crimes. If you didn't do these things, mm -hmm. then their lived experience does not matter. Their lived experience is a lie, right? Yeah. If they think something happened that didn't happen, then you, sh you should denounce their lived experience because they're lying yeah. about their lived experience or their lived experience is actually what happened and in which case you should be in jail right i, I just this lived experience thing i'm sorry event, uh, events occur or they don't occur everyone doesn't have their own you don't have their own no. lived experience right. thank you it, there's just truth and there's just an actual experience of what there's occurred. not my truth and your truth no huh how this works weird all right st the final step here okay of course and this one's a classic uh, this one goes back years but it fits perfectly in the woke apology step eight the perfect woke apology video 
I'm 25 years old and I have my whole life ahead of me. But I really think that I need to do some serious work on myself mm. and uh, figure myself out. <laughs> so I'm going to start therapy sessions God. pretty much immediately. Oh, wow. Um, pretty also, much. not to blame alcohol, but I oh, truly okay. believe that mm -hmm. alcohol was a contributing factor to my poor decision making. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that alcohol in general has had a devastating impact on my life. Mm -hmm. Usually, so we all I think I'm going to uh, make the decision to join the 12 step program for Alcoholics Anonymous. You think you are? And during this journey okay. into sobriety, yeah. I want to take a serious step back from public life and, like I said, oh. figure myself out. Mm, there you go. Step eight. Of course. Cut out rehab <laughs> and then wait it out because eventually rehab and therapy. Yeah, rehab therapy, wait it out. Uh -huh. Eventually, hope that people forget enough to let you have your job back. Yep. Now the thing about this, I think, that is crucial, and I, you know, again, this is incredibly well executed woke hostage video, <laughs> right? Yeah. I, and I, I'd like to believe, right, that maybe this is sincere. Maybe this guy's having an awakening after all of this. I hope it's true. But like the one thing you need to understand about these types of approaches, no matter how many times you say lived experience and transparency, it doesn't work. Because the woke mob does don't not care. care about you. Right. They don't care about whether you're apologizing. They care. Yes. So they will come and come and come and take everything from you. They don't care about whether you're making your life a little bit better. They That's don't for care. sure. Yep. They're not interested in whether you're getting therapy or not. No. They don't care. Nope. It's not what it's about. It's they about just don't want you to. Yep, and uh, I don't know, look, if he did these things, maybe he doesn't deserve to, the but Back this isn't going to work, my friend. In 10 years, you and I might be complaining uh, that the, you know, the bugs we're eating aren't grown in the USA. I mean, they're from Canada, you know, they're being, a, they're from a giant manufacturing plant in Canada. In the meantime, let's say, let's not import our meat, you know, we've got ranchers here. We have cattle here. We have fisheries here. We have chickens here. Why are we importing this? Right now, I want to ask you to support your local rancher, please. Um, these guys work and they're getting screwed everywhere uh, they possibly can and they're losing their farms and guess who's buying it up? Big corporations. So let's support our ranchers. Get your meat from Good Ranchers. I want you to go to GoodRanchers.com. You can order your meat, your chicken, your fish. You can subscribe and get a year's worth of chicken for free when you subscribe to any Good Ranchers box at GoodRanchers.com. All from America. GoodRanchers.com. American meat delivered. BlazeTV.com and YouTube tonight. It's Studios America into Glenn TV. I'll be filling in what everyone is missing in Biden's classified documents scandal. Binge listen this and all your artists. Any song from our library of millions of songs, all ad free. Get your free 30 day trial of iHeartRadio All Access. You'll love it. Don't be basic, be extra. Start your free 30 day trial of iHeartRadio All Access now. Money can be a tool for happiness. Like when a happy money personal loan eliminates your credit card debt. Yeah, that kind of happy. For personal loans with low fixed rates and your best interests at heart, apply today at happymoney.com. Happy Money. Fund your happy. NMLS ID number 1396805. Non-all applicants may qualify. Loans are not offered in Massachusetts and Nevada. Happy Money works with lending partners who originate the loans. Additional terms, conditions, and eligibility requirements may apply. Do you know someone who has difficulty reading regular print material due to a disability? Help them experience the joy of reading again with NLS's free audiobook and Braille library. Visit loc.gov slash that all may read to learn more. Dancing crew, trip for two, now the final interview, game with Doug, brand new mug, come here kid, give me a hug, the more you want to do, the more we want to do, new COVID-19 boosters designed for recent Omicron variants are now available, learn about eligibility and schedule a free updated booster today at vaccines.gov, sponsored by Pfizer and BioNTech. When you stay at a Verbo, the host doesn't stay with you. Because a vacation home with a stranger sounds a little bit like a horror movie. Only whole vacation homes, always private. Book on the Verbo app.
where leaders go, learning follows. Join an exceptional peer group to sharpen your leadership skills at Harvard Business School Executive Education. Both in-person and virtual options are available.